tonight's panel, Matt Hancock, Secretary of State for Health under Theresa May and Boris Johnson. Annalise Dodds, a former MEP, now Labour's Shadow Treasury Minister. Philippa Whitford, a consultant surgeon for many years and health spokesperson at Westminster for the SNP. Editor of the men's lifestyle magazine Loaded in the Noughties, a former Labour Party supporter, elected as an MEP for the Brexit Party last May, Martin Daubney and Chief Executive of Bernardo's, the oldest and biggest children's charity in the UK, Javid Khan. <laughs> Welcome to our panel, to our audience here and of course to you at home. Joining the conversation, you can argue along in the usual way using hashtag BBCUT on Facebook, on Instagram and on Twitter. Right, let's start with our first question tonight, which is from Anju Trevedi. Thank you. Should I be jumpy for joy or crying in light of the new Brexit plan? <laughs> oh, so, Matt, have you been jumping for joy today? Well, I think it's a very good... Like a spring good... rabbit. <laughs> I think it's a very good deal, and I'm, in... I'm very pleased that we've got a deal. I think it's incredibly important that we deliver on the result of the referendum because we're a democracy and that's what democracies do. I think the deal is a good one for the UK. I think it's a good one for Northern Ireland. Uh, and I think it's I mean, good... I the DUP it... obviously don't share that view. Well, I think it's good for Northern Ireland because Northern Ireland get the best of both worlds. They uh, retain... Um, no, there's no hard border on the island of Ireland. There'll be no checks uh, at or near the border. Uh, and yet they are... Northern Ireland remains... <laughs> Uh, and, of course, within the UK, uh, within the UK customs arrangements. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a good deal. And crucially, crucially, after three and a half years almost after the referendum, this deal should be backed by my colleagues at Westminster on Saturday. And then we can get this done and we can move forward and concentrate on all the other things that matter and deliver on the referendum and then move the country forward. So when Boris Johnson said, leave Northern Ireland behind as an economic semi-colony of the EU, damage the fabric of the union with regulatory checks and even customs controls between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, no British Conservative government could or should sign up to any such arrangement. He said that last year. How is that not what he's doing now? Well, that, that isn't the, in the deal. <laughs> customs checks up. No, the no, the Northern Ireland and Great Britain leave the European Union within the same customs arrangement, and but there they, will be customs checks for some goods going between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. This is in order to be able to leave. We're leaving the whole country leaving together with one uh, within the UK uh, customs <coughs> arrangement, as opposed to leaving the whole country within the customs union but more important than that more important than that this deal allows us to move the country forward we've been riven by this brexit row for more than three years and this deal allows us to get brexit done crying or jumping for joy annalise well, certainly not very happy i mean I'm, I'm not crying because i want to try and get something done about this I'm afraid that actually what, what Matt said, particularly about the Northern Irish arrangement, <coughs> just is not what's written in paper yeah. as part of that deal. Actually, it says for any good in Northern Ireland that is going to be exported um, uh, or that could become part of an export or where there might need to be extra checks, it will be part of the EU customs union. So what you would have is two different customs approaches occurring at the same time. Well, maybe, maybe you can explain why all those Northern Ireland businesses that are concerned about this have got it wrong and why um, your government are the only people who are saying that this will be simple to operate, because I don't think anybody else is. But of course, that's even without talking about the fact that this deal just opens us up to years of wrangling, because it says we don't have to keep in step with the EU on working rights or environmental protections or consumer standards. So we could have years and years of argument with the EU after this and indeed with other countries, particularly with the US. You know, this would open us up to a trade deal with the US where we could see our working rights slashed, our environmental protections go, uh, uh, go to the wall. And I just don't think that's what people voted for, for when they voted to leave. So I don't think this is the deal that we should be celebrating. Well, let's see what people think of it, shall we? <laughs> Lots of hands up. 
Uh, yes, the man here in the, in the blue sweater. Hi there. If uh, Boris really wants the support of the DUP, why don't you just pay him off, as Theresa did two years ago? <laughs> just pay him, OK, that's one approach. We want to talk to you about that, Matt. Yes, the woman in the glasses. Is anybody else sick and tired of listening to Boris Johnson's cabinet members constantly repeating the same unconvincing messages over and over again, as if we're going to fall for it, as if we actually believe that on Saturday it's all going to come right yeah. and you're going to suddenly start spending money on the NHS, on public services, yeah. because you aren't and nobody believes you anymore and nobody mm. will believe you ever again. Mm. That is exactly... Uh, okay. uh, okay. That is... By getting this deal through Parliament on Saturday, that is exactly what we, we can do. Won't. You won't. And I understand how frustrating it is for people. It won't. But this has been going on. It's infuriating. It's and infuriating. It is and let's get it done. And when you come to the NHS and the money that we can spend on the NHS, here in Leicester, we are rebuilding the hospital. And we're able to do that because the economy is strong. And with this deal, the economy will stay strong and we can get Brexit oh, delivered. You're, lying. So you're, you're, downgrading, you're, you're downgrading one of the other hospitals. There may be one that you're improving, but there's another one that yes. you're downgrading. We're putting 450 it's million lies. pounds into Leicester, and we're able to back the NHS in Leicester because with this deal, the economy will be strong and we'll deliver on the result of the referendum. With and this then... cabinet, we will continue to be lied to over and over again, as long as it's convenient. <laughs> the man there with the white shirt and the grey jacket. Here we are after three and a half years and we're at the same place where we were a few years back. There's been no progress. You are utterly, utterly out of tune with the rest of the public here. Yeah. You will not represent us, what we voted you in for. And it's a crying shame that we're at this avenue right here, right now. You better negotiate on Saturday because it concerns our futures, our children's futures. And this is something that you ought to hang your heads in shame if you get it wrong. Get it wrong. Get it wrong. I just wanted to ask if you've been to the hospitals in Leicester. They're filthy and falling yeah. apart. Yeah, absolutely. I was there uh, about a month ago. They're in the hospital. Yeah, I was there at the hospital. <coughs> We've rebuilt the A&E, which is much better, but the rest of it absolutely needs rebuilding. We're putting £450 million into Leicester hospitals because they are not good enough at the moment. I can't believe the Labour Party's against it, but we're doing I'm that. I'm not against it. I just think you've got to be honest about the reality of what Jeremy you're Corbyn doing. Today, you said you were going to fix it. It's, 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 it's not right in. Money. So we're putting, we're putting half... Matt, you said putting, you'd create 40 new hospitals. Within show. five minutes, that was blown apart. No. Let's just yeah. be honest Toilets with people and everything about this. Filthy. It's not... It Absolutely. isn't a just a money issue. They're disorganised. They're inefficient. We, it's, not a mo it's not a case of throwing money at it. It, it. But this hospital in Leicester and many of others around the country need to be turned around. The, we need more people working in them as well, and we're going to do that. And let's get on to debating things like the NHS. And to do that, we can get Brexit done, and then we can get on to the NHS and all the other things that we need to talk about as a country. <coughs> the man there, yes, with the, the dark jacket and the blue shirt. It's all well and good saying that you're going to invest loads of money into Leicester Royal Infirmary. What about Glenfield or the General? Um, can you guarantee that there's going to be a net benefit in terms yes. of beds, in terms of, yes. you know, as a whole? Yes. Already, Leicester Royal Infirmary is... It's too crammed. There's nowhere to park. Yes. The roads can't yes. cope with it. All this extra traffic. How's it going to cope with it? Yes. Yes. We can do all of those things and we've guaranteed the money to okay. Leicester. And it's coming in the next couple of years. Absolutely. Okay, Lester, you've heard it from the health Absolutely. secretary himself. Whether well, yes. you believe him, it's entirely up to you. Yes. Let me just drag us back to the original question, yeah. Yeah. which is about the Brexit plan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Javid. What was your response uh, so, to what you heard today? So, uh, uh, to be absolutely honest with you, I think like most of this audience and all the millions of people watching the programme, I don't know whether it's a jump for joy or a, a cry situation. Uh, and this is part of the problem that we've found ourselves in, in the politicians with great respect. You know, are having a, a field day in debating all of this, arguing, disagreeing, arguing and disagreeing again. And who knows what's going to happen on Saturday. What we need to bring it back to is the, the Joes and the Abdols and the Wreckers and the Marys out there in this audience and across Leicester and the rest of the UK who are suffering at the moment. Suffering, one, because they don't know what's to come. So the uncertainty, the lack of confidence in the future, their fears for their children, as the gentleman was saying. And remember, these are the children who are going to live with the consequences of this decision far, far longer than, you know, than our lifetimes. We've got to get it right. Now, 
there is some hope, I think. It's good to see at least that there's been some progress today. I, personally, I wasn't expecting anything today. So that's, you know, let, let's, let's give credit where it's due. Something has been put on the table and it's going to be debated. I think the politicians have got a huge responsibility on Saturday to really test out the detail of what's been presented. My, my test, for example, my advice would be that make sure that whatever deal, if, if this deal is suitable, if you agree it, that it is uh, manageable in terms of the economic shock risk for this country. Mm. Because if there is a shock, the one that we are expecting, you know, don't, no deal would have been much worse, I think. It's going to affect all of our lives in ways that we can't predict yet, you know, in terms of education, employment, job prospects, skills, housing, you name it. People losing faith in the government and in their own futures. We cannot allow that to happen. So deploy that test. Be absolutely sure if you're going to sign us up to this because you have that power, then make sure that we pass that test. Make sure that there's a medium and long-term plan as well, that you're not just getting yourself out of a sticky wicket now because that's what politicians can do very easily. That it's got to be a longer-term view because we're going to have to live with this for years to come. Is it <laughs> there's been considerable criticism of the deal so far. Does anyone in the audience support the deal that Boris Johnson has? Yes. One person. One, no, we've got two... <laughs> two people. Two, three hands. Three. But yes, let's hear from yes. the white t-shirt. Um, so I think we've had enough now. It's gone on, as we mentioned, for three and a half years. And although we have reached an impasse, arguably you can say that it's caused by some strong Brexit Brexiteers who haven't supported Theresa May's deal. But there's also accountability on the other side of MPs who have opposed the deal time after time. And I think it's clear now more than ever that opposing MPs will never support a deal brought by this government, no matter how good it is, how bad it is. And if on Saturday we don't support this deal, Will they take accountability and responsibility if we leave with no deal? <laughs> so really, as good as good or bad as the deal is, it's sort of like we've waited a long time for this. It's finally happened. I think we've just got to take it, set up for it, because let's be real, we're going to wait another six months, another 12 months, another 24 months until we get another deal. Might get slightly better every time, but we haven't got the time for that. We voted leave. That's it, we need to leave now, otherwise no deal is the only other option I can think so of. So you're thinking any deal will do? Yeah, any, any deal at this point, because it's sort of... We saw from the last deal that it just got shut down three times, and if it's going to get shut down three times more and three times more and three times more, there's no mm. point, right? Just get it done. There we go. Martin? So I'll tell you, who is jumping for joy about this deal? Michel Barnier, Emmanuel Macron. They were beaming with delight today. And on the way over here, <coughs> I heard a Belgian MEP on the Brexit Steering Committee called this deal, Theresa May's deal, without the backstop. Three people in Leicester support it. And I think on Saturday, it will be voted down. And your lot, Corbyn, today said they won't vote for it no matter what. He hadn't even seen the deal. And you were going to vote it down. That's not true. Utterly we betra see it today. You've utterly betrayed with it today. five million, it five like million Labour voters, including myself, I've voted Labour all my life until I got into this, were betrayed by your party. But you who just said refusing... that you don't like the deal yourself. Sorry, I'm confused. Yes, no, Martin, listen, hang on. Listen, Before you have a go at Labour, what's your referendum? position? What's Labor your won position, Martin? Referendum. Our position is this. Give Boris credit. This is not the worst deal in history. It's the second worst deal in history. <laughs> <laughs> when you go through this deal, and, and I've actually been through this in Brussels today, here is the small print. You start to look at the political declaration. There are, there are key things which are not... Brexit. The so-called level playing field means we cannot do trade deals with the rest of the world on more favourable terms than the EU already do them. We're going into business deals with our hands tied behind our backs. The fishing opportunities quite clearly state here that we have shared stocks and quota shares. We will not get back control of our fishing waters. This is an absolute betrayal of our coastal communities, including in Scotland, and the more you look into it, military alignment, um, regulatory alignment, foreign aid alignment, this is Brexit in name only. We've once again betrayed the British people. Three and a half years in, we cannot move forward, and the public have every right to feel furious about this, in my opinion. Well, I mean, I think the slogan, get Brexit done and then we do other things, is nonsense. I mean, this isn't even the divorce. This is actually the bloke sleeping in the spare room, you know. We haven't got anywhere near the divorce. So this is the beginning of the beginning. I did wonder where and that therefore... analogy was going, did yeah. you? So, so in actual fact, Brexit, Too much will be, Brexit will be hanging over the UK for the next decade. There is no question about that.
<laughs> and this idea, get Brexit done, you know, I mean, if you had someone who you were trying to talk down from self-harm, would you just go, yeah, I'm fed up now, just get on with it? No, you wouldn't. And the thing is, there is nothing in this deal that would be remotely like what we have now, and two words that are missing from it. One is frictionless, and the other one is Scotland. Scotland doesn't get a mention anywhere. And I'm sorry, you talk about fishing opportunities. Well, my constituency is a fishing constituency where we catch langoustine, 85% of which goes to Europe. Northern Ireland fishing boats are just off our coast. They will be able to land through Northern Ireland. And, you know, I'm from Northern Ireland. I don't begrudge that. But fishing on the west coast of Scotland will be absolutely hammered by this. And as someone who spent 33 years in the NHS, everyone's NHS will be hammered by this. How many Europeans have ever looked after you as doctors or nurses? These are the people who look after us. These are the people who work in our universities doing research. We are losing so many health benefits by coming out of Europe, including the wee plastic card that if you're sensible, you have it in your wallet. You know, we talk about, oh, avoid no deal because we'll have medicine shortages. The end place is a Canada-style free trade agreement. That means we are a long way from Europe. That means there is lots of friction and we lose a lot of options. And for us in Scotland, our European citizens are critical both to our public services, but also our rural communities. And we can't afford to lose freedom of movement. It's been a huge benefit to every single one of us and many of our young, pardon me, many of our young people. I have a great record. <laughs> I'd just like to say something that I never thought I'd leave my mouth, which is I think Boris Johnson's done a brilliant job with going over there. Everyone said, everybody said, oh, you can't, he won't do this, he can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he's actually, he's proven everybody wrong. And from my perspective, it seems to me that um, no matter, you know, he's just knocking things out of the park and people just can't stand it. And that's really got, you know, people like myself, like more interested again, like, oh, actually, this guy wants to do it for the people, wants to do it. And he's really pushing forward. Now, Another point I'm going to make is the DUP and the EU seem to be really levering the island backstop thing for the whole of Brexit. There's thousands of issues, I'm sure, to do with Brexit, but it's always to do with the Good Friday Agreement, the DUP, the Northern Ireland backstop, all this. I'm like, well, what's, why does that one issue stop and put a, a big break on the whole thing and we have to negotiate around that? And, why doesn't it, you know, it's going to sound crazy, but Ireland being referred to as Ireland, the island of Ireland, why don't we try and just get that as an island again and then we can carry on with our own thing? What, what just <coughs> no longer have Northern break Ireland... Break up as, the as, union. Uh, yes, break yeah. up, not, no longer have it as part of no. yeah, just the United Kingdom. Ireland, the whole of Ireland. Well, well, the Scottish government put forward a compromise. We were the first... Well, you weren't suggesting that. No, but we... <laughs> our, our compromise in Scotland's place in Europe in December 16, so nearly three years ago, was to respect that two of the nations of the supposed precious union had voted to remain. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we'd be out of the EU, but to allow both nations to stay in the single market... Be and part of the United Union. Kingdom. And, yeah, we'd, we'd have stayed part of the United Kingdom, but we'd have been allowed to have a single market and customs union, Northern Ireland and Scotland... Scotland voted we would to have stay in, in the United Kingdom. Yeah, a, quite a different United Kingdom, where we were promised the only way that we okay. could remain in the EU was to vote no. You're a part of the but, United Kingdom. Yeah, and you've completely ignored us for three years. <coughs> we voted to remain. We're not mentioned in the deal. We've been treated with contempt. And yet our solution of both nations being in single market and customs union would have solved the Irish border issue overnight. I think that this is, I think this is a good deal. I think many people said that we would never pull it off and that Boris Johnson would never pull it you off. Well, yeah. you didn't think but you'd pull it off. You ran against it. You haven't pulled it off, yeah. <laughs> and, when, and then I... And then I <laughs> And then I, I did, and then and I, and then when I pulled out, no and then when I, did. when we, when I pulled out of the leadership race, I backed Boris because he had the <laughs> biggest chance of anyone of getting a deal, and that's exactly what he's done. And I think the most extraordinary spe spectacle today, of many spectacles today, has been Nigel Farage and the Brexit Party announcing 
they want to delay Brexit. No, we didn't say that. That is the Brexit that, that, party that's fake themselves. News. I'll tell you what actually happened. Well, well, I, re I read it on Twitter Oh, it must have been true. From <laughs> Nigel Farage, his own account. What, what so, actually happened is, is that the Brexit party has, has been consistent, saying we want to leave with a clean break Brexit on October 31st. That's now not going to be possible. And I, do, I don't even think Boris's deal... Do you, do you honestly think it's going to get voted through on Saturday? Yes. And this is what the second referendum, and, yes. and the SNP wants a second referendum, yes. and, and, and the Liberal Democrats want... That's what they're heading for. They're using this as another delaying tactic to push for a second referendum. And what's even going to be on that ticket? Will we even have a proper leave on that ticket? Or will it be Remain and, and a version of well, hang on. Let, Remaining? There's a question about the exactly that. Let, let's hear it.